Good evening, everyone. I'm going to have uh, our Vice President, Mr. Haas, do the agenda today, and my voice is coming and going, and so everybody could be here a little more clearly, and my voice goes all the way out during the meeting. I might as well just have Scott run it from the start. All right, we're going to call this meeting in order to the Plain Township Board of Trustees for Tuesday, April 23rd. If everybody else stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. And just so everybody is aware, uh, the, meet the meetings are now, are now recorded, so during public speaks, you are technically on camera. It's just a way so we can keep residents who can't make the meetings informed. So. Just as, a, just as an FYI. Um, before us, we have our agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections by fellow board members or department heads? I'm going to put just under uh, trustees, fr friends of parks, parks for soldiers. Is there any other? Okay, the agenda stand is amended. Uh, that'll take us first to the sheriff's report. Lisa, do we do we have anything? I don't officially have anything for the sheriff's report. Do we? However, have, I'm sorry. Yes, we do have residents tonight present for the sheriff's report. Okay. Uh, if we have anybody in the crowd that wishes to address the sheriff's office regarding any concerns, just please state your name and your address for the record and you can use the podium. Hi, my name is Thomas A. King, 6220, Bellevue Road, Northeast, Kingdom, Ohio, 44721. And I'm Lori King of the same address, address. And first, we'd like to thank everyone, the trustees and the staff and the Sheriff's Department for giving us a little bit of time to hear from us. Our issue is about bark, barking dogs, not a barking dog. And um, we've spoken with the sheriff, sheriff's department numerous times about this issue. And they suggested that we call the um, Plain Township. And so on the 22nd, last, not, not the 22nd, on the 15th, last Monday we did. And I spoke with Stephanie and Zoning. And we've kind of been working a little bit. Um, as we said, we live at 6220 Melody Road, and uh, in two, spring of 2011, new neighbors moved in, and those neighbors have lots of dogs. I have no idea really how many. Well, um, they, have, they, have, they, they raise ton of dogs. They breed them. And they have uh, five existing dogs on the premises, other than whatever they raise pup-wise. Most of these are it's outside all the time. They, they have 24 houses. 7, yes. 365, whatever, you know, they're out there all the time. And it started right away uh, when they moved in, in in the spring of 2011. And we didn't really say anything that year, I don't believe. We, we heard it and thought, oh no, what's going to happen here? But we thought maybe as they acclimated themselves to the neighborhood, they would see that it, it's, it's a very nice residential neighborhood. Um, beginning then in 2012, it, it particularly affects us more in the summertime, just because, or even in the spring, because we start to you know, raise up the windows and we're out more and things like that. Last year it was very bad. Um, it's not that it doesn't happen in the wintertime. There have been times that their dogs have woken me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I hear them barking for an hour at a time at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I have to get up and go to work that the next day, so it, it's uh, <laughs> that's aggravating. But it is especially bad when we're trying to be outside or we have our windows up, and, and so we. The only thing we have really done up to this point is called the sheriff's office, and they come out, and I know they've spoken to the neighbors. That has not done any good. Um, it, I don't see that it's ever had any effect. Whether they're getting fines or citations or things like that, I don't know. Um, but it, it's never curved it any. Um, then on the 14th, we called again. The sheriffs came out 
And then they, they also spoke with us because it, we ended up finding out that these people now have a kennel license. And it was brought to our attention by the Sheriff's Department that I guess there's a resolution with McLean Township that seems to indicate that if you have a kennel license, your dogs can bark 24-7 <laughs> and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Um, which, when we heard that, we were very surprised. Um, the motion's 92-517. So, so how cover is no, it's, a, it's our home rule resolution. And it's, it's, quite frankly, it's one of those situations where you put legislation in place, you try to think very deep. The issue we were trying to address at that time was people who would move in next to a kennel that's already there in a more rural setting. Right. And you, so you can understand we wouldn't want to penalize those people. That were already there. That were already yes. there. And so that's, that's by way of a little bit of background. But you're absolutely right. You're also right that it does exempt them from our home resolution that the sheriffs are able to enforce. Right. So if the, the board was going to try to address this problem, a couple of things come to mind. I'm sorry, I don't want to oh, impinge no, on that's it. That's okay. <laughs> but one is a change to the zoning text that would not allow kennels in residential areas, maybe R1s or whatever, however we define that in the zoning text would be one way to go. Understanding, however, that this particular kennel is likely to be grandfathered because it's in existence. So I want to make that clear you know, for the record. But, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, through the realm of things, we've also determined uh, that he does obtain a kennel, kennel license, but that it's not for that address. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, and I have made the sheriff's office aware of that, and we've discussed it as recent as today that they can be cited mm -hmm. because it's not a correct uh, license. What what address is it for? Evidently his previous address. It's two no years idea. old for their previous address. So, that, so, that, being, so that being said, you just can't carry the kennel. Well, the problem, the problem is, is until we would amend right. That, right. Re that resolution, if anything's done in the interim, right. they would technically They would rush out and beat the clock, so to speak, on, on something at that particular location. What's the time frame initiating it to getting it passed? 30 days? No, it's still a little longer than that to get a tax amendment through. Probably by the time it's all the way through 60 to 90. By the time it's effective. Because there's a period of time where it has to... We have to publish, publish it, it twice, so. and then it's... It... Oh. We'll move quickly on it, probably says. It's almost not fair, it's going against our grade. In other words, we want to pass this new resolution on not allowing kennels and residential, but then we have a person there who could beat us to the punch and, and do it. It's, just, it, sure. it's almost like right. if anything's in the in, pro, in process. If we initiate it prior to the license being no, issued. because it's an effective date yeah. issue. And that, that's really the issue. If he were to have his ducks in a row, so to speak, before the effective date, he'd be grandfathered. Now, he's not here. Right? No. So, no. does he know you're here? You know, no. Those kind of things I think matter too. But yeah, does he know we're here? Well, yeah, has, go ahead. Has, the deputy in the rear, he would like to speak. So, oh, Mr. Mr. Right. It's in regards to this whole thing, and we're, we're taking a very serious stance in regards to this, working in collaborative with the homeowners, the, the kennel owners, and the township themselves. Is there anything in the legislature about transferable uh, dog kennels uh, license? Because they were a township resident when they purchased it. They moved to another location in the township. So, does it state anything about transferring it from one location to another? It doesn't. It just says kennels, and and so that that would be a kind of a secondary issue we'd have to look at. It may be that he's valid where he's at right now. And that's good to it's, see. It's, that's it's, to the auditors. It's yeah. We don't issue the licenses. We don't. So. That's all completely Yes. What can we do, Mr. Walbert, to help you with the scene? Well, like I said, it, it, one of the one of the issues that you may have is he may have that license. I'm not sure. I've never looked to see you know it's, what what that means that it was issued for a previous address and now it's at that address. It may be that the, the license goes with the with the license holder as opposed to a particular address. I don't know how much they look at where it's at versus who's getting it. I think that was your point, Rod. I think what we need to do, regardless, going forward, we need to get 
the text minister and then move it forward, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. Um, put, I mean, pop in a business now. Yeah. So I didn't and say that lawn mowing, real lawn mowing company that was operating out over your your old neighborhood, the business just right with It's in an home occupation. It should require a zoning permit. Our zoning doesn't cover panels. panels. But, but it's a business still, so we need, we should address it in some manner that we're allowed to. Well, you have to talk to Denny more about that one. I mean, I can look at it. If we don't allow them in residential districts, right. under our home rule, they should cover it. Well, not under our home rule. You mean under our zoning? Under our zoning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we can look at that. Now, is that something we can address under our home rule? What? Kennels? No, I mean, we couldn't, you wouldn't want to. You mean to make it like a some kind of violation to have one that exists? You, you wouldn't want to do that under home rule. In fact, I, I bet it's probably exempted under 504, which says you, know, you can't do stuff with animal harboring, welfare, guns, you know, that it has that list. I, I think that probably excludes it there for home rule. But definitely, I mean, you want to look at your, your, your zoning tax. I think that's a starting point. This issue with the, with the transferability of the kennel license is going to be an interesting issue. Because I'm sure they're going to argue that, oh, I got it here, but this, I just moved my operation. That's all I did. And we have now, I know like, with a liquor license, you can't do that. I know with like, yeah. certain, but I don't know if the license that's, goes with the people or the property. That's where if we have that line, the proper language in place, Great, yeah, you had it over here, but this is totally zoned different, right. differently from over here. So. Right. Well, and that's a question that the county auditor could answer mm -hmm. because they do the licenses. So they should be able to answer that question for us. Mm -hmm. I do have another question. Um, <clears throat> you have to obtain some kind of permit or license to raise poisonous snakes or um, Exotic snakes and rats in your basement. Wouldn't be from us. Yeah. But I don't know if the state has a request. A lot of states are putting. Well, I will just place. change the exotic animals that, all after that. Mm -hmm. After those mauling or yeah, mm -hmm. after that, that gentleman that committed suicide and released the lions and tigers. Right, right. Because that is another issue that we deal with. It's under the table because it is in their basement and they do do it. And uh, my daughter's witness to it when they moved in. She went out and visualized. Uh, these cases in the camp, they uh, put glass boot thing, tanks and put them in, but uh, <clears throat> you, you, you supposedly have over a hundred of them. And you go to sleep at night and they wake up in the morning sometimes a little frustrating when he first moved down. Because they're out of sight, out of mind, I don't hardly pay attention to it, but it is something that uh, is on my mind and my family's been Sure. Just as a, a point of to kind of point you in the right direction of that, I would call the Humane Society. They don't oversee exotic animals, but they will be able to just by their training um, be able to point you in the direction of where to go to get that answer. Why okay. can't well, let's let's make these contacts ourselves and get with them and let them know who to contact. That's, I mean, let's. Fair yeah, I can process. do that. Yeah. I can. I'll find out about the exotic animals for you. And Scott, you said you'll call Alan yeah, Harold. Uh, yeah, licensing of kennels. ODNR. Oh, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Okay. I'm I sure the uh, tent, the owner, uh, is probably aware of uh, his maneuvers, rules, and regulations, whatever you want to call. Them. But. Uh, I don't know what they you know, when we bought our house, we had no idea this was going to happen. And we're Got a zoom start. Black slap in the face here. I think we've got a couple open yeah. action items here to try to help with it. Obviously, we don't have an immediate okay. the immediate well, answer that's going to fix it not, tonight or I'm within the, the next week. I'm kind of in a situation, yeah, where uh, I'm trying to not have contact with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, I mean, it's just like Sunday. Nine o'clock in the morning, a nice sunny day. From nine o'clock till five o'clock, five dogs going at it on the scout. Not a way to spend a Sunday. So at this time, we really don't. I, we were told that we could call the sheriffs, but now there's. I guess there might be an issue that that perhaps their kennel license. Is I think we'll have an answer about that tomorrow. Okay. And. Um, 
be able to, to let you know about that for sure tomorrow. Okay. Let's, say the, let's say the sheriff can go out there now because, because it isn't one that belongs to that resident, but they're going to kickstart those residents then, yeah. and they're going to say, hey, wait a minute, I, I better go do our homework. I can't tell and, you what uh, to do, but I could. Yeah. I say something like, why don't you lay low for a little while and let's see uh, <laughs> well, we've been let's see how far we get two years. That's so. what we did what? this past week. Um, yeah. all this was I, mean, I know it's a pain, but I think what you're to get the best result that we can get, that might be the best course of action. Don't take the vote. We can transfer. Yeah, all right. Because yeah. I'd like to, I'll work with Denny and see if we yeah. have something ready for you to look at at the next meeting in terms of the zoning text amendment that talks about where kennels can be and defines kennels and that kind of thing. And then obviously we'll have to uh, change that home rule resolution as well um, to take kennels out of there in terms of an exemption. And, you know, whether that creates problems on the other side that we tried to avoid in the first place, we'll have to talk about that when I bring that legislation up because it yeah. very well could. However, we've never gotten those complaints. Right. 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 Well, at least you're going to stay yeah. in contact. I'll stay in contact. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank I'll get it very much. Thank if you. Like, ask you if, if like, if, uh, she'll, she'll do that, but like, let's say a couple of weeks go by then, and you, just, you can always call. Hey, Lisa, we don't want to bother you, but uh, let's still you know, keep keep an update on your on communication with her so we can get an answer. Okay. Great. I feel bad for it. Yeah. This is the dogs. Do we have anybody else that wishes to address the uh, sheriff at this time? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. That'll close out our sheriff's report. That'll take us to unfinished business. I'm going to turn that over to our administrator, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. Item number one under unfinished business is the Taco Bell annexation, which I will turn over to our law director. I just have a resolution for you here tonight. Uh, to object to the Taco Bell annexation on the statutory grounds that, that we're able to. I just include them all as adult suspenders, list them for the commissioners. They will then know that we are not uh, consenting. You have a choice to consent, to object, or to do nothing. If you do nothing, it's considered consent. So this is your resolution to object to that particular annexation. So also move on unfinished business number one. I'm a second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. And Mr. Haas? Yes. <clears throat> that will complete unfinished business. It takes us to new business. Mrs. Campbell? Thank you. Item number one is, um, I believe we have a gentleman here tonight who is going to speak about the New Rue International Program. And at this time, if you could step forward to the podium, introduce yourself, and tell the board and those present about the program and what will be happening. That would be perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sam Scott, and I'm from Oakwood Middle School. I'm an eighth grader there. And I'm coming today to talk about a new thing that we're going to try and do this year at Oakwood called a water walk. And this plan initially came about last year when I was in seventh grade. We had a communications class and we, our end of the year project, we had to pick a global um, issue and we had to come up with a community service project to try and solve this issue. So we chose my group, who couldn't make it tonight, we chose to do poverty in Africa. We chose this for two main reasons. One being that our counselor at our school, uh, Mr. Gagnon, he had gone to Africa over the summer. And he said, just one scenario, he pulled out one piece of candy and just all these kids swarmed him just for one piece of candy. We thought that that was really interesting. Also, I have a personal connection because my cousin, his name is Jane Harriman, he started an organization called Nuru. And Nuru itself is just like a new kind of humanitarian organization. They don't just do handouts, because what my cousin Jake said when he was over doing his tours in Afghanistan, 
in Africa um, at, in a, as a Marine. He said that there was hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical equipment just sitting in the corner of a hut because these people didn't actually know how to use this medical equipment. So many organizations get all this money, they buy this equipment for them, and they think it's going to solve the problem, but they actually don't know how to use it. So New Roof, they go and they equip these people, they train them how to use this, how to farm, how to produce the greatest uh, agricultural output and thereby increase like their finances. So we chose to do uh, a walk called a water walk and all these proceeds will go to Nuru. And the water walk really just consists of the participants they'll have a five gallon bucket of water on their head with padding and they, our location that we chose, it was the Schneider Park across from Glen Oak High School. And we are proposing that we're going to fill up the buckets at the pond by the dog park and walk around about a uh, half mile loop and then return the water back to the pond so that we don't waste any of it. And so through this walk, the participants will be able to realize what these girls as young as three are going through each and every day. They'll just be able to experience this. And as I said before, all the proceeds will go to Nuru. And so we hope within our lifetime we'll be able to end extreme poverty. Two, two quick questions for you. Do you have a date and time in mind? That you're looking yes. To we, we're presenting our African poverty um, project on May 3rd to our middle school at 8.45 in the morning for the 7th grade and at 2.30 for the 8th grade. The actual walk, uh, the dates, we're trying to still get them figured out. It's either the 16th or the 17th. We still have to clear that with our principal and with uh, a person that we're working with from an organization also called Tom Todd. And he's just helping us out to get all the logistics down for the event. So, because you're 16th or 17th. So, outside, outside of the ability to use the park, I mean, is there any type of commitments or pledges you're looking from the Board of Trustees for beyond just saying, hey, yeah, that's great to move forward with on the 16th or 17th? I don't believe so. Okay. And I got just one crazy question. Because that pond over there is a retention basin, it actually says to stay out, stay out of it, pets or individuals, just because it's all water runoff. We're not going to have any issues with no. that. Right? No. Uh, nope. I don't, want, I don't want to get a call saying, oh my god, did you see those kids playing in the water? <laughs> well, actually it was for good educational purpose, right. but you know somebody is going to bring it up. Yeah. I think it's a great initiative, especially being at eighth middle middle school, seventh and eighth grade, to have some type of a global perspective on the impact of what folks are going through, not just in all kids. How do you raise the money? You said that the proceeds. Were uh, yeah, we are. We're charging. We have a couple different. We are charging five dollars for the actual event, and we also have made a T-shirt that will cost eight dollars. But if they want to buy the T-shirt and do the event, it's going to be ten dollars. So the spectators, or, or who, who who pays for the event? Just the student. Well, just the we participants. Participants. Just, yeah, just the students are going to be participating of Oakland Middle School. Because sure. we don't have, we really don't have much cost for this event because we're getting all the buckets donated. Um, we have gone around to Walmart, to BJ's, Home Depot, Lowe's. We've requested buckets from them. Uh, we're trying to still follow up with them about that. And we've also talked to someone, uh, I believe his name was Todd Alexander. That's he said that he's going to uh, help to donate some buckets for this cause. <clears throat> so that's where we're going to really get our buckets from. That we're going to have a donation pot there too. Especially, especially. I mean, money that we're going to come on this. Should so people come and donate? Well, people might want to come yeah, I guess so. be there. Um, because we're doing this during the school day, the actual event is during the school day. Oh, school day. Well, yeah. given, given the fact of the retirement population in, in the township, mm -hmm. you may actually get some folks who are saying, well, the parks aren't all, all that crazy at this time of day. They'll come out for a good project like that. And I mean, I don't know what your guys' take is, but for us to post this out on our Facebook mm -hmm. and our Twitter sure. and our webpage, our mm -hmm. webpage just to help drive Hopefully, yeah. our, maybe our friends in the media do a nice little article. article on it. See, I mean, as soon as you know the date, if you let me know, okay. yeah. then um, we can, when we post it, 
you know, you may get a nice turnout of people okay, who yeah, may want to donate. We're, gonna, we're probably going to have a date by tomorrow yes. for, for meeting with um, the person. Yeah, just call here at the Township Hall and let us know the date and time, and I can add that to the flyer, and then we can blast it out on our Facebook, our Twitter, our um, Township website. So I definitely would have something for donations there. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. I commend you for nice being nice here. Yeah, very nice job. Great job, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, just keep us abreast of you know, what date and everything else that we can do. Russell, what's his name? Sam. Sam, Sam do you wrestle? No. <laughs> I'm the wrestling coach. I was looking for that high view. <laughs> eighth grade, that's what I coached. Eighth grade, you've been a uh, heck of a wrestler. <laughs> Well, there's still time. Yeah. Get back in the saddle. State <laughs> material. That's going to take us to new business number two. Thank you. Item number two is a resolution to pay Haynes and Company for the printing of the 2013 Plain Township newsletter in an amount not to exceed $2,017.22. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. And that ends the business. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. That's going that's to take us to our fiscal officer, Mr. Flax. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, fiscal officer number one is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to authorize the payment of pending warrants in an amount not to exceed $261,553.85 as attached here to it made part of the minutes. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. This officer number two is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to authorize the payment of the regular payroll in an amount not to exceed $220,000. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. This officer number three is a request, a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to authorize payment for the following medical claims as provided by Benefit Services. So move. Second. Mr. Lena. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. Uh, fiscal officer number four is the, uh, the investment report. Uh, yes. since, since last, last time. I know you said you were going to dig into that. Correct. Uh, we pulled um, different uh, rates from the banks in the areas. Uh, the best one is a, a special that first merits running at a, a 0.25%. Uh, it is a six month, which we put them both due uh, right about the same time. Uh, the only other viable option is to place this into Stockpile Plus, which is actually slightly lower. It's 0.22 right now. <coughs> So I think the best position is to actually do the six months with first where it keeps the money local and it's the best rate that we can get right now on it. And we just roll, we'll roll that whole thing. Correct. Whole time. Yeah, yeah. The, and with Star Out Plus, that's like a five day liquidity solution. There's not a liquidity solution. Mm -hmm. so. uh, fiscal officer number five. As a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to authorize a refund as follows for overpayments for emergency medical services as requested by Ohio Billing. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Officer uh, number six uh, is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, um, for the adoption of the Section 125 premium only plan uh, that was put into uh, that was put into place back in 2006 under Resolution Number 06155. This is essentially the annual renewal for that. I'll, I'll move on. Fiscal Officer Number Six. Second. Discussion. How does this relate directly back to the employees? I'm just trying to figure as far as that Mr. G makes us a second. Yeah, he's second. Lisa, are you able to, you know, on this with this whole premium only? I mean, is this based determining what the employees pay or is it 
just not clear on. It's it allows for the um, like we had talked about when we had the one meeting to take your let's say there your prescriptions or anything met after your or with your deductible to turn those in for tax purposes okay. so that you're not taxed. As, like we had talked about at that other meeting, also. Correct, to, to permit uh, actually the money that comes out to be pre tax. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's my easiest explanation. No further discussion? Roll call. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Fiscal Officer. Number seven is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to authorize the following transfers. So move. Second. Uh, discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giavasis? Yes. Uh, that will conclude the fiscal officer's report for today. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Nothing under the administrator takes us to fire the Chief Schallenberg. Just have one item on the agenda tonight. Um, the Plain Township Trustee Board Star County has to be authorized the approval of payment of physical control for a per resolution of 10-123 for a 2013 installment for the five-year maintenance contract. Starts on April 1st of 13 and will run out March 31st of 14, amount of $8,407.80 from account 28-A OED. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Linga? Yes. Thank you. Deputy Chief Shower, that's going to close fire. That's going to take us to the road. Mr. Iacino? Yes, Mr. Vice President. Item number one is a list of road material that we received that opened uh, last week. And, uh, gravel prices have averaged about 83 cents a ton. They've gone up. Um, limestone, 50 cents a ton. Believe it or not, asphalt stayed just about the same. Wow. Is yeah. yeah. it Rio or Rock Rio? Royo. Royo. They're masculine. Um, I used them cheap. last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. For delivery, it was cheaper than us going to get it locally. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> this is impressive. They still raise them, though. They're, they raise yeah. them. So, <clears throat> well, I guess that's number, number, two. number two. There is, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Item number two is a resolution to award the 2013-2014 road material bids to the following um, vendors. Um, what you see, what we did, we split some of them up. We gave delivery to one pickup because it's right here to another. And uh, the limestone, only one company bid on it. Asphalt we gave to all three because we can work all three of them as a kind of part of the township. We're working in when you get there. Also move on the road number two. I'll second it. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Item number three is to authorize the execution of the contracts for the 2013 and 14 road material bids um, to those contractors and get the contract signed. Um, I do believe Mr. Flex has those contracts. And we can get them out to the vendors. <clears throat> Any motion? Yeah, I'll move on road number three. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giavasis? Yes. <clears throat> Item number four is a resolution 
to authorize the purchase of gasoline, oil, and diesel fuel at a cost not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. I'll so move. I'll second it. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Mr. Hawes? <clears throat> yes. Item number five is just for us to talk about microservicing. Um, I understand, Mr. Hawes, you have a conversation with the contractor at the engineer's office. Uh, yeah. Uh, Saturday. <laughs> stir, let's just say stir the pot. Stir the pot. Um, I mean, I think first let's start back. I know, what was it, three Saturdays ago? No? Two or three Saturdays ago. I, was on the sixth, yeah. I know you, Lou, and myself went out. We drove through essentially all of the areas where it was microsurf. It's either year one or year two. I think it's clear that year one work was better than year, two, year two's work. Um, I think is Mr. Lino and I were out at the county engineers annual meeting and the guys up there saying everybody just loves it, there's nothing wrong. I sort of had to throw the flag on that deal because you know I know we had to call some back out because of the quality. We got the seat team. Yeah. I mean, I think my, I had asked questions about you know training of the crews while while we was out there. Yeah, and they talked about the screening of the material and so forth. And how it started out, it almost sounded as if we were like responsible for screening the material. I'm going, we're not the ones that provide this. And you know, it's something I, I expect. One, if they've got teams that they rank, whether it's an A team, a B team, or a C team. Well, obviously in year one, if we got their A team and the work turned out pretty good. Well, last year I want C teams C teams pricing that went with the work. Exactly. I mean, the uh, expectation I don't even want that work done. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, well, we, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was kind of glad Scott brought it up. And, you know, Zach does what he does good. He, he sells for them. That's what he's supposed to do. Um, Joe and I had that meeting prior to last year with Zach at the road department's office. And, you know, they guaranteed they're going to give us that first team. Um, I'm glad the trustee Halls brought the fact that that piece of stone that gets caught in that device, you don't see it when it's being drug across the road until it dries. By that time, it's too late. You got to, it's too late. Um, I, I me mean, personally, I, I have a concern. I mean, this I took this picture today. That was all. We saw you guys saw that, but it was on, yes. the, you know, it's four streets are like this. Over off of Diamond? They're all, I mean, it's not just, they're, they're, they're completely cracked. Yeah. And this is not even a year old. This is not even a year old. Look at all these were taken today. <coughs> this is just one section of a, a, a four rows that are all, every 20 feet, this is what you see. Wow. Um, so you and I discussed, he said he's going to bring his first team back. Am I so long yet? I don't know. I'll know this year. Me personally, and personally, we have to go back to doing only four, four roads a year versus 11 roads a year, making sure that we don't get this, then it might be back to being worth it. I don't know. I mean, I th I'm not 100% sold. The only thing is, a couple of streets that we paint will use new asphalt. If you drive down those streets right now, a couple of them have cracks. Listen, that's because everything that, cracks. It's our because, weather, everything cracks. It's because primarily, I believe, Joe, like I told you on that Saturday, Pardon me. Um, is that it has a lot more to do with the base of the road than it has to do with the asphalt. Sure. And if the base isn't, because like you said, some of those roads were constructed back in the 50s and 60s. We don't know what type of base are under those. Right. And they're not to the subdivision standards. Or, you know, so they're going to give, they're going to crack, they're going to break. Um, we just got to keep on, whether we microsurface or we asphalt, I think we need to keep up. Well, we have to keep up. Crack seal those as best as we can, even if we micro seal them. I agree, though. The teams that they used last year were horrible. Oh, I, um, I, I, I think all of us agreed to that. And it concerns me a little bit. I'm not sold against this because I know it extends our roads' lives. Because I've seen the roads we did two and three years ago, and they look better than the roads we did last year. Yes, okay. But I don't understand how a company can send to a community. A B or C team. Yeah. Well, it's just like any other business. 
they, they got a lot of business. They got spread thin. They're, they're, they don't only work in this end of the state. They work in Columbus area. They work in Michigan. They work in, and they just spread themselves out too thin. Is what they did, and then we ended up getting the, the wrong end of the stick. If it requires us wait until the, pro the proper team's in place, you know. Well, you know what it was. Guides. Perry Township did some. Star County Engineers did something. So they wanted to bring up. They wanted to come up here and do it all at once. They didn't want to leave us. You know. And, you know Joe, it's not an excuse. I'm not making yeah. excuses. Well, Joe, do we have any road? I, I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. I'm just going to say, I mean, thanks, for, quite frankly, for bringing it up three years ago. Because, I mean, it was a way for us to Try support to say another option, say, stretch our dollars further. So, Yeah, but you can clearly see those roads that were done two or three years ago. They look fine. Yeah. And they actually have smoothed out. Sure. Traffic um, runs on with us. Um, I just think we got either bad product last year or we got bad labor one or, or both. And I don't think I think it's the latter. I think I don't think we can totally cancel this out based on last year. No. Based on what we've seen the first two years we were successful with. Well I'm I'm we're evaluating right now and I don't think what we've done the last two years <coughs> we're ever gonna go to that level because I don't think our roads are there because we need to do more paving than, than uh, we actually because it's past that point. So I will have a list probably hopefully by the next meeting, if not first meeting in second meeting in May. What, both. Uh, so. what roads can you can I go look at that have not been micro but have been paved and it's only two to three years old? Do you know any right now? Fraser off of uh, between Snyder and Fifty Fifth. Between. Snyder, Linder, Circle area, all the way you know, down around off of Chaucer, Birmingham. Down that all area. was Chaucer or just all around Linder? Linder, all of Linder Circle. All that area. In the last couple of years. Um, and these were paved. Yes. I just I'd like to go look and, and see if, if well, it's, it's not the same. You're not going to see the same. You won't so see you those know. cracks. Oh, you'll see cracks. Oh, yeah, I was trying to say there's cracks all over. Like the the Going into my allotment. That whole thing. Fenwick's the other one. Mr. It's Grant. You look at Fenwick, that was done two years ago. Stone Crossing oh. got cracks in it. It was really, really big. I just want to just look and see yeah. if I see the same cracks. And sure, Stone Crossing was paid last year. And I'm sure there's cracks in it. Right. I think the most disturbing thing I heard was that rock that got caught in that device that we can't see until it dries. And by that time it's too late, you've got those ruts. I it's think like, that's inexperience. Okay. It's like, oh, wait a minute, are, are you not you supposed to see that like, the year before that rock getting cut? Should you not look at that every five, ten feet or whatever, lift that thing up there rocks in it? It makes it just made no sense when they said that. Well, we had a rocket stuck in that device and we really don't know that it's doing it until it dries. By that time, you've got a hundred feet of road you did with a rock in it that made splines for it. That was the that was the clincher for me. That's that Joe said. It's an experience of the crew because yeah. we didn't have that issue before. Well, you were out there the year before and watched them do it. You yeah. Didn't, you didn't see anything happen. Yeah. Like that. So. so I think it was the crew that we had last year. So I haven't uh, even been contacted them yet about them. putting a list together. So Sean and I will be working on that all next week. So. Uh, all right. Thank I think you. yeah. Just, just for caution, you know, I've already had a resident call me today. There, there's an allotment that's a concern about this, and Luke, I just think we need to be careful. And that, that resident's got legitimate concerns, yeah. because he probably got the worst job of all that. Yeah. Right. I just want to be careful. We're just making sure we're getting the best buck for the buck here. Uh, and yeah. I know where you're at, and that allotment did get the worst of the worst. That'll close, that'll close out road. That's going to take us to zoning. I'm going to turn that over to Mrs. Campbell. Thank you. I have a resolution for the Board of Trustees to set a public hearing for zoning amendment number 552 on May 14th at 6.15 p.m. at the Plain Township Hall and to further instruct and authorize the Plain Township Fiscal Officer to prepare and publish notice of the public hearing in the repository on Saturday, May 4th, 2013. I'll so move. Second. Discussion. These are, um, this is a text amendment, uh, adding definitions, updating permitted and conditionally permitted uses in various districts, and specifically update general standards regarding temporary buildings. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lito? Yes. Mr. Gibasis? Yes. And Mr. Hawes? Yes. 
And that ends the zoning report. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. That then takes us to parks and facilities. So I'm assuming Ms. Campbell again. It is. Item number one is a, an amendment to resolution number 13-133 which should now read to hire Seth Bebout as a seasonal maintenance employee for the Parks and Facilities Department effective date of April 1st, 2013. And oh. that is the change, is the date. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Thank you. Number two is a resolution to hire Carolyn Grishaber as a seasonal employee for the Parks and Record and Facilities Department. Effective date of May 1st, 2013 at a rate of 835 per hour with no benefits, pending pre-employment screening. Yeah. Also move on parts number two. Second. Discussion. I do. Are these people that are coming back? Um, the first one was, and that was an amendment, so Carolyn is who has worked for the township for a number of years okay. and that Jobs to Works program, wow. which has expired for her. We had a place for another seasonal, and in speaking with Mr. Alexander, he felt that she has worked so hard for the township that she deserved a shot at that seasonal position. Yeah, she's a good worker. She is a very good worker. I was going to say, I actually know there's a couple of folks from the Y that have seen her work and speak. Yeah. Very high. It was the first time I heard somebody, in the, a female in the park symbol, and talk about and then put two and two together. So her yeah. work is And right the other department heads, although. Uh, Joe is, is Chuck are the only ones here have spoke very highly of her. Roll call. Mr. Lito? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. And then I have another amendment which is for the purchase price of the GMC Sierra 1500 extended cab. It now includes shipping which wasn't originally included. Also move on parks, number three. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. And then the final resolution is to authorize payment to Frank Gagliardi for instructor fees for soccer programs in an amount not to exceed $1,368. So move from parts number four. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. And that ends the Parks and Facilities Report. Nothing under communications. That takes us to our public speech portion of the meeting. If anybody in the crowd wishes to address the Board of Trustees, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. Okay, that's going to close the public speech. It takes us to concerns of trustees. Uh, guys, I had asked just to put on here. Um, Friends of the Parks, Parks for Soldiers Race, that group is uh, looking at two to three different events again this year, but they want to do that Parks for Soldiers event Sunday, no, yeah, the obstacle course race, looking at Sunday, November 10th, November 11th is actually Veterans Day, but being that it falls on Monday, there, there's concerns that wouldn't be able to, say, get the draw because not everybody gets that day off. Um, furthermore, they actually think it, there's a lot of greater upside potential having it on that Sunday because you know, if they want to get a dignitary or somebody over there to speak, more likely to because typically everybody else is always scheduled, scheduled out and so forth. They're just looking to see if the board would you know, be, be open, open to that. And uh, we looked to incorporate pretty much a lot of the same elements as last year. I told them, you know, whatever facets would be added or changed that we'd need to be apprised of those details. But they at least want, you know, the green light from us so they could go ahead with planning and so forth. It was, uh, it was done very well last year. I mean, for a first year out. For a first year out, I think it's done very well. So I'll let, I'll let, them, know. I'll let them know. Is there anything else under concerns for us to be very good? I have one thing I just want to add. I got a phone call today from a resident. I had a question, Lisa, about the first energy uh, electric, was it the? Electric, uh, aggregation. electric aggregation. I 
was my understanding that they could opt out of this program if they chose to without any penalty? During the opt-out phase only. Opt-out phase only. Yes. Okay. It was like a 60 or 90 day. It was a 90 day, I believe, opt-out okay. time. Because he actually got taken to collections for this opt-out fee. And, um, yeah, it was just during that period. And everybody, and I know sometimes people get mail because unfortunately when we went with the electric aggregate, anybody who had an aggregate program at that time, other companies started mailing our residents, which caused confusion. And people didn't know which one was the townships. And I'm sure that's what those companies do, and that's their intention to then try to get people to opt into their programs because they know, oh, the township's got one, let's mail. Um, so I know there, there was confusion there, wondering which one was the townships and did I get in the right one or not. So everybody did receive literature from First Energy, but I know they were inundated at that time from people who took advantage of that situation trying to send them their information and kind of wreak a little havoc. Um, no. So they may have missed reading at, that or... At the beginning, did you have to call the sign up for this? Well, you didn't have to. There was a period of time where they actually opened it up longer and gave people an opportunity to opt in to start saving sooner, but you didn't have to. Everybody um, got they a bring them to in, opt out. But the ones that didn't opt out in writing or by a phone call, because I know when I did We're it... automatically enrolled. You had to opt out. They, they automatically put, I know why it was put on the back. Yes, okay. on the back. yes. That's why it was a voted upon issue. All right, so I can clarify that one. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, anything else? Concerns of trustees? Okay, that'll close that out. Concerns of the fiscal office? No. We're good. That takes us to approval of the minutes. So move. A second. Discussion. Roll call. Lisa, do you have Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Alito? Yes. Okay. There, there is a need for executive session, so be it thereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees of Star County, Ohio, to adjourn to executive session. It's 6.53 p.m. from this regular meeting is authorized under Ohio Revised Code 121.22G for the purpose of consideration of 1A, appointment of a public employer official, 1B, employment of a public employer official, 1C, dismissal of a public employer official, 1F, compensation of a public employer official, 2B, the sale of property by competitive bid to prevent the disclosure of information that would provide competitive advantage, 3, a conference with the law director or other retained counsel concerning pending or imminent court action, and 4, preparing for, conducting, or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees. Second. Roll call or discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. 